Ah, good evening. Hey, welcome. Lucky you for you. I decided to make another video that, you know, so I can uh, bring some more uh, light and sunshine into your life. So, anyway, um, we had a whole crap load of stuff going on, so it's probably going to be a lengthy video, and uh, well, that all depends too if uh, my phone battery holds out, you know. Anyway, so we did a couple of trips this week and that, and uh, um, one of them we went to was the Amish um, up there to get some more stocking up. It, it was actually kind of awesome because we found a lot of stuff that um, uh, we actually didn't have. And uh, one being, and um, it's not the greatest. It's not bad, you know, it is what it is, but it is. We did try some zucchini jam, and you know, I suppose, probably, you know, it actually probably wouldn't be bad if uh, we added some... Uh, spices into it see how it's going so um the next thing we got was uh this is a new one and it actually smells pretty good this is actually powdered vanilla and um it literally smells like a dehydrated vanilla extract and i kind of put it up there and show what it looks like as much as i possibly can um uh, another one, um, uh, we did get the honey mustard, but I also did find some, uh, um, which we got here, some more, because this crap is very awesome for uh, cooking. As a matter of fact, my daughter, my youngest daughter and me uh, made a couple dips for the weekend, and um, uh, she actually used honey mustard powder with some vegetable flakes that we got there, <laughs> and uh, um, we, uh, it turned out awesome. Another thing they did have and they didn't have before, it was like 265 for 5 ounces, was uh, natural Greek seasonings and uh, kind of uh, get this out and smells very awesome. Uh, if you can see how it looks up there, um, turned out really good. Um, uh, one thing with the stuff too, and these containers are fantastic for reusing or for saving, um, another one, uh, caraway seeds. We uh, I've been doing more and more with them, and uh, finally some regular powdered ground mustard. So, um, one of the main things, though, that really blew my mind, and um, uh, I, me and uh, Lily actually did this today, um, uh, and you're going to see the finished product. I kid you not, this crap pours like frickin' uh, tar. This is pure... Um, uh, root beer extract. So we actually made our own um, root beer with this. Uh, tried it for the day. It takes about two to three days before it's done. And uh, um, one of these bottles will make five gallons. Um, uh, we actually only, I don't think I had anything I could actually put five gallons in free at the moment. Because we canned um, 11 quarts of beets as well. Um, anyway, um, uh, this bottle will have uh, um, it, t um, it takes a half teaspoon powdered yeast, eight cups of uh, sugar, four ounces of the extract, and five gallons of lukewarm water. And that will make uh, root beer, uh, five gallons of root beer in two to three days. Um, so we just halved it and uh, made uh, two, ga two and a half gallons. It actually came out to a little bit more. I think I got um, ten quarts and three little 12 ounce shorty bottles out of it. So... Um, I'll let you know how that comes out in a couple days, you know, or, if, you know, I'm gonna poison myself or whatever. Yeah, it's all good. So, um, we got that. Um, uh, um, if you, if you see some of my other postings, um, if you're lucky or unlucky enough to be on my feed on here, um, I usually, um, uh, keep it pretty private on Facebook. So, um, uh, pretty much, um, you guys get to be my guinea pigs on everything. Until uh, I release them on uh, YouTube and MeWe. Um, there's also links to all my videos on Pinterest too. So we got that taken care of. Um, uh, we've gotten so far, we've probably smoked about 35 pounds and um, uh, processed a lot of different sausages and uh, for different uh, meats and different uh, dishes over the coming months. And uh, my lovely soulmate who some of you know, is going to be uh, having some surgery on our hands, so um, I, get, I get to wear the dress in the family for a while. Hey, don't judge me. Don't 
Judge me. I'll beat your ass. In a loving sort of way because Big Papa Stevie cares. So, anyway, we uh, did that. We got that done. And um, uh, what else did we do? Um, uh, we went to Gibbsville. I got um, uh, we got a few other things. Um, went to the cheese factory. Um, and we stopped at another uh, greenhouse uh, out in, around Batavia, which is about, well, it's around Batavia. I don't even know what town it's in. I don't care. But it's about halfway between West Bend and uh, um, Sheboygan Falls. So, um, uh, very awesome people. I think it's uh, Bemis um, Greenhouse or something like that. And uh, very good deals on plants. I actually found uh, three more pepper plants. I actually didn't have these ones. So, anyway... So, without further ado, what we did is, uh, I'm going to take you outside. <laughs> because before we get on to the garden, some of the plants, and show you something, I gotta show you this stuff. Okay, a little bright out here. This is our official. I'm gonna put this bad boy right here, and, uh, give you a minute. Okay. This is our official first attempt at homemade root beer so um it figured um uh in a quart jar it was probably about 30 cents a quart to make with everything by the time it's all said and done so anyway so i'm gonna give you a little quick tour of the plant so um, uh we uh for a couple other things first uh first of all um, this this one uh little uh rogue tree we had here started so we decided to adopt it into there and um you can see too like right here um uh, these are some of our other hot peppers here that have been growing they got some long thins there and the red habaneros they're all holding on pretty good um uh, we lost one and the thai red peppers these are small uh smaller but these we've been uh really going to town uh picking the buds off them um over here um i'm going to try and get a little closer too is uh these are the smaller second generation uh habaneros and hot hotter peppers that we have been um uh, doing so these will probably grow a little later and hopefully bloom a little later this right here is just on the deck um i did may we did manage to scrounge four more t big tie hybrids and um, this right here, Total Eclipse Space Pepper, this thing right here, I don't know what it looks like. I haven't had time to research it. I bought the seeds four years ago, and this is the only lasting one out of all of them. It was really crappy growing medium, so it really didn't last. And these actually were spawned from uh, um, giant uh, poblano peppers we got at Cermak in Milwaukee, which if you don't know that store, Cermak is... Uh, um, if you can find one, it's mostly Chicago based, I guess, in that, but, um, uh, uh, it's, it's at Milwaukee and, um, it's kind of interesting. The freaking produce department is huge. It's kind of like Woodman's. If you got a Woodman's produce around, maybe even a little bit bigger. Um, there, um, you can buy, um, uh, fresh tortillas made right there, um, in the store. If, like, I'd say like a buck fifty, two bucks or three dozen. Um, they're warm enough where you don't you can eat the damn things right out of the bag, and uh, almost every aisle is a different nationality or country. So if, if you get around Milwaukee and that, or I would go check it out. It's pretty cool. It's right off on, uh, on a Miller Parkway, right by the stadium and a uh, VA hospital, if you know where that is. So um, anyway, getting back, we got um uh, here uh, some more of the lemon habaneros that um and these two are also done from seed. Um, pretty much everything up here is done from seed. Um, uh, these were plants, um, with the exception of back here, and these are really uh, biatch, but uh, there's my, some of my wife's uh, loofahs right here, and we finally got one coming out there, if you can see, to hang on out there, and it's hanging on to it. Um, over here are the Trinidad scorpions, and a little late start growing there, and we got some uh, ghost peppers here. 
of my little toys coming up right here, my babies. And we got the Tr Trinidad Chocolate Scorpions on the back roll right here. These are about a foot to 18 inch, and as you can see, they are really starting right down there to start getting some. Uh, right here, and these are the Carolina Reapers. You can get down here looking a little bit closer, and we have buds all over the place. Um, what happened too is uh, everything bolted. Our greens were shot, and that's fine. We got a little bit. Oh, we got probably about five pounds of spinach. And uh, so anyway, um, we had, had to replant, so you'll see some difference, like right here. Uh, thanks, uh, Jenny Fusick, for them. Uh, you know, these are the she gave my wife these uh, <coughs> red leaf canas, which we really appreciate because my. My loving wife, Jean, loves doing these things, and uh, we had some really bad luck with some, and uh, we've got, like, two right here. This is two of the three other um, uh, black walnut trees that were growing in the garden we decided to save. So uh, we had that, and um, uh, I can't believe these things are still hanging on these Florida watermelons. I don't have a space for them. So... We're not doing too much with them. And over here, um, the loan, her first attempt at growing an orange cana from seed. So this is a first for her, and it's right there. And uh, this is the other black walnut here. Over here were the leftover plants we had since greens were shot. We had the planting space. In the squ large square one, we got the um, uh, jalapenos, no heat. And uh, down here in the next ones down are the Carolina Reapers and the big pots. And we do have ghost peppers in the other smaller pots. Yes, our yard is a uh, construction zone. So it does not look the best at all times, but we're getting there. Um... What we have been doing, and um, uh, it appears to, um, uh, we moved our herb garden out in lieu of putting another bed in. So, I'm going to show you some of the highlights of what we did up on top. And I'll try to avoid any of the garbage laying around, because as I said, it's a construction uh, zone. So, This right here is a new uh, herb garden we built. We transferred a lot, and uh, I gotta say, these lavender plants, they keep away a lot of pests. I'll be doing a lot more of them. And uh, mostly done by my older daughter, Kira, and my loving wife. Uh, we did finish a new shed. So that's gonna be a little bit more storage as well. So, without further ado, we're going to go into the garden. Oh yeah, before I forget, I, uh, we, had a, we stopped at a rummage sale for the uh, puppy land uh, business. It's basically a volunteer you know, uh, humane um, animal shelter not affiliated with the um humane society but eh. so i got a little surprise i'm going to be building just for shits and giggles and to look at and that so i kind of hinted on um, uh let me give you a description of some of the finds we found right there and we got awesome deals we filled up a trailer for crying all out for 30 bucks so Probably more crap. We don't need more stuff. We gotta maintain. Yay. So anyway, um, we uh, started with a different sprinkler. So I'm still trying to work out the kinks with the hose. So you're probably gonna see a hole splashed around, whatever. But um, uh, what it's coming down to is um, I'm gonna probably uh, get another sprinkler like this if I can find it. Sprinklers are in massive high demand and. 
this thing, um, just move it to a different place so I can hit the entire garden from one side to the other. And it's, if I had to guess, it's, you know, like I said, it's, you know, 40 of, um, uh, easily, um, uh, oh boy, it's about 85 by 160, so I mean, it's, it's a big enough garden, um, but anyway, so, we've had a lot actually explode over here, um, uh, it's been kind of rough with some of the heat, but, um, uh, some of these plants, um, which are amazing because they have not, um, they didn't produce at all last year. Now they're starting to mature a little bit more. Um, our trees, um, the one cherry tree and uh, the two pear trees and the two peach trees up here, I bet you've got a good three feet of uh, height so far since last year. And that is awesome. Uh, they're starting to spread out. And um, uh, you'll see, a, um, I'm going to take you on a little tour right here to see um, where we're at um with the uh everything um for those who haven't seen any of our newer videos yet we have uh probably got total about 750 plants going total at any given time around here so it's about three to four times more actually what we had last year when we started this happy little experiment so I'm going to uh, flip the gangle over here, and we're going to start uh, with our happy little tour. So anyway, you know, here, um, uh, this is some of our, uh, the two, um, uh, we end up putting a cage around here, actually use a tomato cage, but as you can see right here, we are getting a lot of our raspberries coming back right here, and uh, even some getting the color in that and getting ripe on here. Um the same our um we fixed the netting up and we're getting our blueberries coming in now a little bit not as many as we'd like and uh this was amazing this is the grapevine that our grapevines that didn't think we were going to do much and look at here we have for the first time we i'm going to have to go over here we actually have for the first time grape started and that is so cool um, so moving right along here on this one, here's our line of our sugar pumpkins, uh, and our patty pans and tromboncino squash and the green pumpkins. So, these things, these things called banana melons, I'm not sure what to think of these. These were about four years old, the seeds, I had a few seed packets I got. So in a dick around container garden a few years back, oh, a while back, um, and never got to it. But this is what the plant looks like, so we'll have to see. And these three rows right here are all the green okra coming over. I really want to see this stuff, and these things look like they're blowing up, which is good, because this is going to be my experiment to see how it goes, because if it goes well, I will be moving the other red okra that you see in the bed right there over into the garden next year and over here is our standard green zucchini which we've uh, started getting some uh, a lot of blossoms on and the red hubbard squash and this round zucchini is actually first time ever growing it and supposedly it gets into a shape of a ball so you can see we got a few flowering up here. If you look around. So hopefully that will be doing good. Um, that grapevine too, that appears right now to be the only one actually growing any grapes. But as you can see right here, I do have an issue with shade and I'm gonna have to rectify that. But all those ones that look dead right here are going around, they're starting to come up a little bit better and um, again to our daikon radishes we uh, had bolt bolting so we had to pull them as you can still see we got uh, the Chinese asparagus beans growing on the trellis there and we got all pickling cukes right here started as well 
And uh, this bad boy, this is a real skinny tree that we had last year of one of them with the pear. As you can see, it's really bushing out. So um, we kind of talked them uh, probably. And uh, right there, you can see the other pear tree and the peach trees in the background in the garden. And um, we probably talked that um, uh, near this fall, we will be cutting down some trees. So we'll be uh i not or not cutting no, down we're gonna cut back the main one so uh they start getting the girth <coughs> and uh can actually start producing a little bit better so over here then we had uh lily's little flower garden here and some more chives she rescued and uh kind of futzing with these two plants right here this little area tomatoes is Stephen jr's little area so <clears throat> we are trying to get the kids involved in everything we did get some snap peas started there and this right here is the red okra and you can see like some of it's growing a lot faster it's naturally a bigger species than the green ones um we have green emerald green okra um the Clemson Spineless and the Red Okra. Um, the Red Okra actually um, uh, turns green when cooking. And right here, the Sweet Banana Pepper, you can see we already got some started right there. And this, some of them, it is what it is in Wisconsin. This isn't always good because uh, I don't want the plants stunted. You can only do so much with this many plants. And <clears throat> I know my loving wife is doing the best she can and <laughs> so am I and it is what it is but we're working on now these right here um we actually just grew a beet we're gonna leave these beets all year as long as we can just to see how big they get and that so we're going to be looking into there and uh seeing what we can do this is our uh, cauliflower here and we haven't had too many flowering any white heads yet and that hopefully soon um and this, the kohlrabi um we're starting to get some good ones right here this is probably the best one right here and uh this is actually all this out of the giant coal sack they get eight to ten inches to long a few more here and a few random beets and swiss chard and other stuff that we thought weren't going to grow we had some extra cucumbers too that we all potted up if we could and put some right here and we got some more uh, asparagus beans over here yeah, as you can see right here the height on the uh, peach trees are doing a lot better and these things are called bird chilies right here these are, I was told these things will get about 1.7 meters in a pot. I'm like, no way. Well, I may have to eat some crow on there. Well, these right now are probably about 18 inches tall in the pot. Um, we got some broccoli coming through, and all these are the new tomato styles we have are the mortgage lifters. And partially due to the sun but there's a lot of messing around with some of these and we did lose a couple but not bad and we have them all the way down here we're doing it for the most part bigger tomatoes if possible smaller ones actually right here we have our um the black crim which is a nice uh darker colored variety and a lot of our small peppers we put into this bed here and i uh, did a nice little border with uh pull uh, bush beans and in the back we did the kusha pumpkins there uh, going all the way up over to her flower garden these other ones were the market more cucumbers that we uh, got going on and uh, some uh, raspberry vines from one of my friends at work In the back, you'll see in the tires, we decided to put our dill there this year. And these were a very hard to find plant this year. These were um, cherry tomatoes, the ones you used to find in pickled ones. And we got, managed to get them um, uh, 24 of them. 
We have 48 of the jalapenos that, with the no heat and ham jalapenos or pepper fooled you or tricked you, whatever you want to call them. Uh, over here on this side, we did the um, Amish paste again. Um, and these were a little worried, but they're starting to come back. This one, for example, is probably about six inches past my knee. Getting some good girth on them. And these things right here, the brandy wine. This is a really cool looking tomato, and I'm hope, hoping it'll turn out good. I'm, uh, some of these are pushing waist high. So I am very, very impressed with these. So I'm hoping the other ones will be going out. Now the biggest tomatoes we got right here are called the pineapple tomatoes. And these things supposedly are going to get up to two pounds. And the vine's up to seven to nine feet. Um, if you can see right here, um, the ones in the middle, this is a four foot stake right here that I'm touching and you can see right about where the tomatoes are so these literally ballooned up especially if you look at a video from last week uh, this thing is going fantastic too we have about 240 250 uh, pole beans and about 80 uh, bush beans all around inside now if you're gonna look up here right here the vines are getting up to the five foot limit on some of them like right here um they were strangling the tomatoes so we really had a look but we are getting our jungle frame back so that is a good thing back here we had some romas uh, i accidentally picked up off uh, like right here this one right here is at about 48 inches right now and uh Going down, if you look close, there's two to three plants turning around it right there. Um, there's a couple other ones with two or three plants on one. So I would, I am hoping in another couple months or so we do get a lot more uh, beans. I, I calculate about if one, if each plant would get one bean per week, we will be looking at about eight to ten pounds per week, and that's if that one. Per week um i gotta say our strawberries are doing fantastic considering um and we've been harvesting probably about a pound a week easily off these two beds and a lot of them are just uh you know helping the pest protection with the lavender plants which uh really bloomed up uh and oh boy i these are, i don't remember these are armenian cucumbers or something else but uh, we'll find out. We had to plan something there. Can't waste it. And over here we have our rhubarb and our asparagus did come back. And when the spinach came out, we ended up planting all tomatillos. And uh, in the pots we had some uh, burgundy bush beans. Alrighty. So I told you it was gonna be a long one. Uh, we um uh, yeah it's I was I've been on vacation trying to get a bunch of crap done. Had some other issues with you know, people pissing me off so to speak. Oh well. <coughs> um. So anyway, yeah, it's getting a little warm out here yet. We're going to kind of uh, take her easy. You know, a few 20 pounds more overweight than I really want to be. That don't help. <laughs> and uh, 
So on to the rest of the yard. So anyway, I'm uh, I started getting the kids involved a lot more, and um, yeah, fat ass raccoon I had to take out, and he was on the deck destroying things. I think we got them all, so hopefully that'll be done. And uh, we had a pretty doozy of a storm, so I really don't want to accuse the kids of being a slob or anything, but. And it's not worth listening to the one excuses. Ha <laughs> ha, here. Oh, technical delivery here. Ah, uh, the other thing, too. Um, I forgot. Over by the garden. Um, this is one of two of them of fig tree seedlings that we did plant. So, and around the border, if you can see by the rocks, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, my wife planted some clematis, so hopefully those will be uh, pollinating and growing in there soon. And we uh, relocate a lot of our mint in that, and uh, I think the mojito mint or something. And my daughter Kira did. She did a pretty good job right there, and I'm not sure what we're going to do with this one, but we got to keep this empty for little future things. See our flower garden area is doing good. And I do have to uh, get a little bit of my uh, work needs to be done here so we can take care of some stuff. But, uh, you know, we did get rid of the raccoons, and I think the reason is because, hey, look at this. We still have a bird feeder left, and it's full. So, yeah, right about now, we ones are over here with the chickens and uh, giving them some. Let's go see if we can irritate the birds a little bit. Boy, ain't that a look for the camera. Really? Nice. So, one of the things we got too is this little thing for a little shade area, quote unquote, dust bath there. And, uh, another thing. Ooh. Energetic in that, we got them, um, uh, The picket fence up we were gonna do and we got this set this is about 60 and I should have bought two more because I had an awesome idea but no I didn't think of it till then I went back of course they're done oh wow wow here is a surprise I've been around our mulberry tree blowing up awesome yeah they get up here and see all these things up here and uh it's pretty huge for a mulberry bush actually and they run back up here and kind of see uh, it's about oh, 45 feet or so so yeah we're gonna have to go rob that later kids are bored i'll find something for them to do so anyway i go to make my little chicken village Hey, a couple good things here. There's five bucks a piece. These are about a hundred in the store. A little resin right there. I got four of them, so we're gonna be making a little chicken village soon. Um, I don't know if we actually have no more of our uh, um, what do you call our soil down here? It's been used up or in storage for later. 
So we will eventually be putting a shed here. Probably a prefab one. And these cages right here, I want to go out because I'm, uh, right here is um, our, the snowblower we got a few weeks back. This cage is about 45 feet tall, kind of like considered right there. It's a two-tier one. And we got these for in case the girls get sick this year. Or too cold in an emergency, we got to bring them indoors in the garage. There's ample room for them for at least uh, keep them warm. And this is pretty awesome right here. It's um, uh, these, uh, okay, now I got to figure out how the heck to get these done again. I go right there to lock them with the spring. So, yeah, $5 a piece. That's, I'm sorry, right here, you're looking at probably about $750, $800 worth of cages and everything. $30. You cannot go wrong. So, over here was the end result of uh, my loving wife's uh, front what she's been doing keeping up and she's got a lot of uh lily lilies and cana lilies coming up a rogue tomato plant from last year look at there see what comes over there and uh you can see we cut down the two trees over here so that's one of her beds that she's been working on has been doing a fantastic job at So, I really don't have much else uh, going on. I'm uh, in a family who did a nice little day, day today. I'm uh, looking forward to Father's Day tomorrow. Just sitting there relaxing for once. I'm, uh, I already got my uh, Father's Day present from my wife. I'm, uh, it's one of the, one of those uh, things that um, uh, she accidentally sold on the boat to the tune of a nine millimeter caliber. So nice. I will enjoy that later. And she's baking some all day and uh, doing some canning. Um, this is the other thing too I noticed around you, which is really awesome. Is well, it'll also help keep some of the idiot thieves around here all over and get them injured if you look around we got a lot of uh wild blackberries growing in this little thicket in front and that so you know hey have at them if they want i'm going to i'm going to thoroughly enjoy seeing them being bandaged up you know and you know maybe throw a jar of rubbing alcohol on them and that when they get back that'll help then go break in some other liberal turd bags yard let them deal with it. So anyway, that's our excitement for the weekend. Um, I did not get accomplished a lot what I wanted to, but that's okay. Um, started going through a little bit more. I am uh, got a couple more connections for my solar array. Again, not as many as they like, so I'm uh, take it for what it's worth. But uh, there's a shortage on a lot of stuff that are necessities, and a lot of people trying to prepare for the worst. I'm not going to waste any time talking about what I think it is because anything, anything I think is most of uh, my idiot relation and idiot people I call acquaintances think I'm full of shit. That's their business. I'm not going to fucking argue. By the time I spend arguing, I could be having a lot more shit done. And is what it is. But 
but there's a lot of shortages going around and uh you know it's like yeah to me i've learned i don't get scared i don't get paranoid i go into full mode and protect my household period i owe no person nothing except my kids a life and my wife a loyal husband I keep a observant, um, uh, like the Lord says, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, roll over and take it. So, if you got a problem with any of the stuff like what the Bible may or may not say, or anything. So I'm not talking about the church. There's plenty of idiots. You know, they all, you know I'm, I'm going to quote somebody. Gandhi once said, the problem with Christianity is it's full of Christians. And he's right. But I'll tell you what. Everyone has a free will they got from the Almighty. So you screwed your life up. It's your own problem. You got a problem with what I say, or if you got a problem with what I think, or if you don't like, or you're offended by my views, and it hurts your widow feelings, um, uh, allow me to apologize and buy you a cup of shove it up your cornhole, because, uh, take it up with God, his rules, his planet, you can wreck it if he wants, and, uh, you don't like it, now, again, I'm just relaying a message. Anyone who cares, listen. Don't want to? Oh, well. I'll live. <coughs> so, that's about all I have to say about that. So, one of the more intelligent people. God, that looks nice in the background. Look at that. That nice American flag. And uh, Trump is my president and Jesus is my savior on that bottom flag. Boy, I see some liberal probably get mad at that, probably get offended. Well, again, um, I've mentioned before, um, that's about 80 feet on my property, so you can try and come and take it down, but uh, pretty much ain't going to be any mistake about who's trespassing. Not when you get to it, and I can guarantee you'll drop before you get off my property, so think twice. So, that's my little video of infinite wisdom and bun being a bundle of joy today. So, if you enjoyed it, you, know, you didn't, oh well, you can send me hate mail, you know, that death threats, whatever, I don't care. I know, I know what I'm doing, that's all. So, until next time, uh, um, I'm going to get back to try and relax a little bit. I got about 20 pounds to throw in the smoker today if it uh, gets thawed out enough, so... Um, what are we going to do? Oh, oh yeah. They're like Philly steak cheese brats with pepper jack and green peppers and yummy. Um, thanks everybody. Thanks enough people being stupid enough to take their COVID shot and, uh, make it easier for people, you know, who actually weren't so much as a stupid sheep to follow them all. Um, uh, we were actually, we, my youngest daughter and I, um, uh, took a run to a couple stores. They are actually giving samples. And I was not going to get these, but I'm like, ah, the heck with it. So I did go get them and, uh, ended up, uh, buying, uh, oh boy, it's a four dozen of them. And we'll cut them up for meals and slice them up. So easy meals for later. And uh, what do we have for tomorrow? Um, uh, onion cheeseburger brats. And uh, you know, onion bacon cheeseburger brats. And uh, these other huge Polish sausage with uh, 
applesauce flavoring. So this will bring it up to about 60 pounds of uh, meat process in two weeks for the family. And um, uh, um, they're all vac, vac sealed and ready for the freezer. So when my beloved wife has her surgery, um, we'll all be set and make it a little bit easier. So God knows, you know, you ever want to depend on anyone to help you, so yeah, that's their business, and I hope they remember when I uh, give them the same thing back. Um, I'm one of those that believe um, uh, if I'm an asshole to you, you have to ask yourself what the fuck you did. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. And uh, again, I will leave you all with good day. And a nice pretty view of that flag. So, again, God bless our nation. God bless our troops. Except the ones, you know, who in, in, enjoy uh, committing stolen valor. Which, um, uh, I'll leave the military to have fun with that. And God bless the sun on that bottom flag and uh, the man who still should be our president, Donald J. Trump. And uh, maybe we should be praying for our leadership. And if he does not change his evil ways, that uh, he be removed and real leadership be established. Amen.